Uh, hello everyone, uh, I'm here to showcase my personal workflow for the Magic Lantern HDR feature hack thing. Um, you are going to need the Adobe Suite for this, uh, so, or at least After Effects, uh, I'm using Premiere as well because of the dynamic link. Now I have three clips here, I'm not going to run through it for all three clips, but uh, I am going to showcase, tell you about the clips and why I have these particular three clips. So this first clip here is uh, shot to try and get a, as high of a contrast as I could get. It was a really flat day outside. So it was very, very difficult to get a really high contrast scene. And uh, I feel as though this was a bit too high contrast, but uh, this is about four, four stops difference. Um, so 100 ISO and 800 ISO, and even then um, I couldn't get the sky properly exposed. Uh, but uh, anyway, so I had my friend uh, Chris come out and we shot this. Um, the next shot I have is another example of me trying to get as high of a contrast as I can. Um, and this was actually shot at 60p, which I've slowed down to 30p. Uh, and this was just because a lot of people have been talking about, will it work? Will it work? Yes, it will work. However, you do have to deal with uh, the... You have to deal with this. First of all, you're at 30p, which not everyone likes. Um, secondly, you are going to have to deal with uh, more moire, as well as the lessened resolution. And then I also have this clip, which is what we will be working on today. Um, which is a just a scenic scene of some rocks that was some mist in the background, and uh, this is going to be what we're working on today. Uh, so as you see, there's a bunch of highlights here that uh, are a little blown out. The sky is a little bit blown out. The water's really blown out. So we're just going to see what we can get out from here. Uh, so I have After Effects open here already. And that's all I've done. Uh, so essentially what we're doing is we're using the dynamic link feature in Premiere Pro to save us uh, buckets and buckets of time. So for those of you who don't know, I just right click, replace with After Effects composition, which I've already done. So here we go. We have our clip here. So the first step uh, is we're going to duplicate our footage, and you'll see why in a moment. Um, Next, we're going to use the time time stretch feature, and uh, the reason we're doing this is because we need to get rid of precisely half of our frames. So we're going to set the stretch factor to 50, uh, which is actually doubling the time. It's worded kind of oddly, and what this will do is this will get rid of all of the even numbered frames. So if I play through you can see that we're only getting our underexposed area or properly exposed depending on how you want to look at it. So next, uh, this here is the first thing that I was kind of confused on how to do and it's really simple. Um, let's make that invisible. If I were to right click uh, time, time stretch, 50 this, I'd end up with two layers of shadow which I don't want. So, let's undo that, undo that, undo that, undo that, come on, there we are. So what we're going to do is really simple, we're just going to get rid of the first frame, and then time, time stretch, 50, and this will give us one layer of just the highlights, let's set this down to quarter resolution for speed, of just the highlights, and one layer of just the Sorry, one layer properly exposed, one layer underexposed. Um, so from here, it's a bit of a game. Uh, there's a couple ways that you can do this. My personal favorite is the Luma key. And we're just going to drop that onto our underexposed. Key out darker is move the threshold until you get a... You don't want everything that's dark there, because then it... You want most of it... Um, so for me, I'm going with just about there. Now if I play it through, it doesn't look very good. 
So we're going to add a whole bunch of feather. Now, if you use the slider here, you can only get up to about 10% feather, which isn't quite enough for our needs. So we're going to bring it all the way up. Uh, you can bring it all the way up to 100%, which sometimes doesn't work, sometimes does. Here it seems to be working all right, except for over here, uh, which you, know, you can play with it a bit, bring it down, um, and then thin is that you do get a bunch of blocky jumpiness. Um, so as I was saying, uh, the the technique is to use a Luma key at its base form. Um, however, what I usually do is usually do a lot of playing, so you know I can try keying out the brighter areas instead of the darker, um, which will let me do very similar what I just did. Uh, something else that really works well is the key out dissimilar, which I which in my experience usually gives me a little bit more works just a little bit better for me. Um, I want to be I want to avoid getting that mountain because that was causing a lot of issues earlier. So we're going to bring it up here to about 50. You guys see we're getting a lot of glow. Um, let's go to full resolution so that you can actually see. We're getting a lot of glow here, which looks like a bad photo, and it looks even worse in motion, which is not going to let me play back because this is eating up all my RAM. Um, so yeah, it's really, it's really, really simple. Um, you really just want to play around with these parameters a little bit. There's no real science to it. There's science, but not in what you'd think. Um, not sciencey science, more like not sciencey science, which doesn't make any sense at all. So really, you're just going to really want to play around with these parameters. Um, something else you can try, which I've gotten to work before, is to uh, play with the opacity. You can just bring down and then I see the highlights really overexposed. Um, I'm realizing that I don't want to do the opacity on the highlights. So I'll do the opacity on the low lights. Let's transform opacity down. And just by bringing the opacity down just a little bit, about 50%, you can see just how much difference it's making. Um, it's bringing down all those highlights. You're getting all this detail. The sky is exposed. The water is still overexposed. But thing in the water was always overexposed. So, and you can see here. Now, play around with it. Really, the, the main technique I used is the uh, time stretch. Now, so you're here. You know, you have your uh, video, which was done very rough. Uh, I just you're you're just getting back you know a little bit of that detail, um, you know. Again, I was saying it was very low contrast day. The cloud there was a lot of cloud cover. Doesn't look like it, but that was probably the only blue in the sky, and uh, even the overexposed got still had it. Um, so, so so this isn't the best footage in the world to, sh to show you as an example, but uh, yeah, just. That's all this. It's just a quick example to show you my workflow. And uh, now you have a 12, if you're using 24p, 12 frames per second, 25p, a 12 and a half frame per second uh, video, which looks really fast and really odd. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back into Premiere and right click new item sequence. And then here we are. I'll just leave it sequence 02 for now for simplicity's sake. And you're going to bring sequence 01 into sequence 02. And the first frame is useless. Um, and right click, speed 50%. And then it's back up to the an equivalent of 24p. It does have to do a lot of interpolation between the frames, but uh, then it's the apples. You may just want. You may be wondering why I wouldn't just do this in After Effects. Um, really simple explanation. Uh, if I, and by this I mean, uh, 
just the slowing down. The reason is that usually you would use a lumen key in this particular case. It seemed to work best to use uh, lower opacity, but most of the time in my experience you're using a lumen key instead of just lowering the opacity of the uh, darker layer. Um, so when you're using Luma key, I'll bring the opacity up to 100% just to show you what I mean. Um, opacity up to 100, effects, Luma key, and we'll just leave it like that. It's complete crap, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. If I were to pre-compose these with Command Shift C and then right click time stretch 200. Um, After Effects actually remembers these frames when you do a time stretch. So what it's going to do is it's going, when you do the time stretch and have it, it's not deleting those frames here. Um, so we're going to Z all this. Uh, so what we do is that we go into Premiere and then the sequence one, the same thing will happen. So we have 4P. Um, However, if we were to use our 60p footage, which was then slowed down to 30 frames per second, so let's delete all that, right click, new sequence, and let's make it a 720p, there's no 720p30 option. So. seven twenty P let's go seven twenty P like that and then even though this is not a thirty frames per second oops not properties I right click sequence settings there we go um we're actually going to go to playback settings and uh I haven't done this okay thirty FPS Okay, perfect. And then we're gonna drag our 30 FPS into here. Right click, place the After Effects composition. It's gonna create a new After Effects composition, uh, which should be the proper frame rate. No, it's not. Let's make it the proper frame rate. And there we go. So now we have our 30 frame per second, which is actually a 24 frame per second. Sorry, it's actually a 60 frames per second video which we're playing back at 30 frames per second. Um, I did this in Cinema Tools. You can use, you can actually do it right with an Effects. Um, yes, so process is the same. We duplicate, right click, time, stretch, 50, right click, time, remove the first frame. Um, that is actually very important, one of the most important steps of this particular workflow. Time stretch 50. Um, so now we have just a straight dark at 30 frames per second, like actual 30 frames per second, which is pretty sweet. Um, it's playing a little bit slow, but that's due to the uh, speed of my computer. So as you see there, there we have 30 frames per second. Um, so again, you know, it's just a simple process of Luma key on top, key out darker, bring it up. Now, one of the issues that with this particular shot is uh, the way the light comes in, it actually lights this up a lot more and it messes up our key. So in a perfect world, I would actually just do this, just to about here, but because this is lit up so well, um, the way the light is hitting it, this is totally my fault, uh, the way the light is, is hitting it, if we leave it like this, till it looks decent, and uh, something, one of the issues with uh, shooting in such high contrast environments, this here is again, I believe this is also uh, four stops, is your people can glow. So also, first of all, as you can see here at 60p, um, or 30 frames per second, the artifacting is very, very acceptable. Um, 
It looks a lot just like motion blur. In short, in summation, the workflow is to use After Effects to duplicate the layer, duplicate the video, use a time stretch of 50, one f sorry, of 50, five, zero, and then from there, uh, use a Luma key and play around with the settings there a little bit. If you are shooting 60 frames per second, uh, you can conform it to 30 frames per second, and then you don't have to do anything once you have your processing done. You do not have to slow it down. However, if you're using After Effects and you are using Adobe Dynamic Link, you need to create a new sequence, put the other se put the first sequence into the second sequence, and then from there you need to slow it, bring it back to 24 frames per second instead of 12. However, the in my experience, which is very limited, you know I'm going to go out soon and get a lot more tests done over the weekend. Um, one thing that you do want to keep in mind is people are very, very hard to shoot. Um, I'm thinking it might work better if it were something along the lines of If it were something more along the lines of, you know, maybe one or two stops, but uh, four or five stops is far, I feel, is far too large of a difference to have people in the frame moving around and being subjects. Uh, I'd love to be proved wrong. I'd love to see your guys' workflow. This is still a new, a relatively new process. And uh, this is just what I do. There are ver there are other workflows uh, that you can use, which are available in the links below. Um, one of which is done by is the official workflow for Magic Lantern, which is all with open source software, and it's great. Uh, as for this, it's just a little more streamlined, and I have the res and I personally have the resources to do it this way, but not everyone does. So. I will see you next time.